All right, we're going to discuss a hidden code in the Fibonacci series. This is a hidden mathematical code, and we're actually going to prove it, its, its existence. Okay, so this isn't going to be some magical thing where we're relying on secret knowledge from a from some source. I mean, we're actually going to we're actually going to uh, rigorously prove that this exists. Fibonacci series is um, uh, defined. Let's say it's loosely defined. It's not an uber rigorous definition. But we start with 1. 1 repeats. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Uh, then we're going to repeat that again where we add uh, two, the 2 plus the term just before it to get 3. 3 plus the term just before it to get 5. 5 plus the term just before it to get 8. And so on uh, to infinity. And there are a lot of interesting mathematical coincidences around, uh, they're not coincidences, I mean they're actual patterns and provable patterns around the Fibonacci series um, and also connected to the golden mean and, and, and which is a ratio that shows up in the Fibonacci series, the golden ratio, and it actually helps to generate it. And, it, and also it is um, What's really mysterious about it is it both helped to define actual shapes in nature, from trees to nautilus shells to spiral galaxies. What I'm going to show you is just not even a fraction of the mysteries around uh, the golden, the, pardon me, around the Fibonacci series, but still, it's going to be fascinating. We're actually going to see a mathematical proof uh, in action. So, um... We're going to have a lot of people watching this who are interested in science and mathematics. I also, uh, we're going to have some people who might be uh, mystics or people interested in mysticism. What I'm going to say to the people interested in mysticism is, um, I do think there is a mystical question around this. I mean, in, in some soft sense of the term mysticism, I mean, at least, okay? But the difference is, I'm not relying on an ancient text or um, some kind of alien communication here or or I'm not claiming to be an anointed prophet who looks at the Bible or the Quran or the sutras and gives some kind of a, a speech from on high. I'm actually engaging in mathematical proof using reason so that I'm not the authority. I'm not the guy who knows everything. You are. You're the authority. You're the one who's going to be able to know uh, that there's a hidden code in the Fibonacci series and you're going to be able to prove it. So, um, this is my gift that I bequeath to you. The hidden code is this. For every term in the Fibonacci series, if you square it, you'll get a certain number. There's a difference of either plus one or minus one when you take the product of the term just before it and the term just after it. So for five, five squared is equal to 25. Um, if you subtract one, you get three times eight. 8 squared is equal to 64. If you add 1, you get 5 times 13. 13 squared is 169. Subtract 1, you get 8 times 21. 21 squared is 441. Add 1, you get 13 times 34. Notice an oscillating pattern. Plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. I have it down here. 1 squared, right here, plus 1 is equal to 1 times 2. 2 squared, minus 1, is equal to 1 times 3. 3 squared, plus 1, is equal to 2 times 5. Uh, 5 squared minus 1 is equal to 3 times 8 and so forth. So, to prove this, I need to prove an oscillating pattern. I need to prove that if there is a term here, let's say 5 squared minus 1, such that it equals the term just before 5 times the term after 5, that the next term squared plus 1 is equal to um, the term just before that next term times the term just after the next term. So, that's what I'm going to set up here. This is not the golden ratio when I use phi. This is the nth term of the Fibonacci series. So I'm going to use phi to describe the nth term of the Fibonacci series. The nth term of the Fibonacci series squared minus 1 is equal to uh, the term just before that times the term just after that. Now, you're saying, wait a minute, see, it's just true. You're assuming what you're trying to prove. Well, no, I'm assuming that it is true for a certain term. And then I'm going to prove that if it is true for a certain term, that there will also be a difference uh, of 1 for phi n plus 1 squared uh, and a difference between of 1 between phi n plus 1 squared and then phi n times phi n plus 2, except it'll be a plus 1. 
Now that'll be half of the recursion that I'm trying to prove. And once I do that, proving the other half will be very easy. Okay. It is true for a term, let's make it 5, such that phi n squared minus 1 is equal to phi n minus 1 times phi n plus 1. And actually, it's true for numbers way higher than 5. I mean, it's true going all the way on up, okay? But for the last term n, such that, it, that we know that it's true, phi n squared minus 1 is equal to phi n minus 1 times phi n plus 1. From there, phi n squared minus 1 is equal to phi n minus 1 times phi n minus 1 plus phi n. Well, phi n minus 1 plus phi n is equal to phi n plus 1 for on, the, on the Fibonacci series. That's true for any phi n, okay? And what I do now is I'm going to take the 1, I'm going to bring it to the other side of the equation, make it a plus 1, and then flip the equation around, okay? So this becomes phi n minus 1 times phi n minus 1 plus phi n altogether plus 1 is equal to phi n squared. Uh, dis distribute phi n minus 1 squared plus phi n minus 1 times phi n plus 1 is equal to phi n squared. Add phi n minus 1 times phi n plus phi n squared to both sides. It makes it phi n minus 1 squared plus 2 phi n minus 1 phi, phi n plus phi n squared plus 1 is equal to get that really close there. I'm never, I'm never very good at this. Is equal to, I might have to read that, is equal to phi n squared plus phi n minus 1 times phi n plus phi n squared. Okay. Phi n, okay, phi n minus 1 plus phi n squared. What did I do? I just took this term here and made it phi n minus 1 plus phi n squared plus 1 is equal to phi n squared plus, and this term, uh, this messy thing here reduces to phi n squared plus phi n times phi n minus 1 plus phi n. Okay, so this is a phi n minus 1 plus phi n here. This phi n minus 1 plus phi n becomes phi n plus 1 here. So, and uh, this phi n minus 1 plus phi n becomes phi n plus 1 here. So this becomes phi n plus 1 squared plus 1 is equal to phi n squared plus phi n times phi n plus 1. That becomes phi n plus 1 squared plus 1 is equal to phi n times phi n plus phi n plus 1. And that phi n times phi n plus 1 becomes phi n plus 2. And voila, we have what we were trying to prove. That, the net, that if this is true up here, that the nth term in the Fibonacci series squared minus 1 is equal to the uh, product of the term just before phi, the, the nth term times the term just after the, phi, the nth term, then if I were to square the term just after the nth term and added one, I would get the same thing um, in relation to that term just after uh, phi n. In other words, if I had the nth plus one term squared plus one, that's going to be equal to the nth term times the nth term just after the nth plus one term, okay? So I've proven half of the recursion. You can see from inspection that if this became a plus one, that all I did was bring it to the other side of the equation. Of course, I flipped it. But if I bring the minus one to the other side of the equation, it becomes a plus one. Well, um, then what if I start off with a plus one? That's just going to become a minus one down here. You can see by following the pattern that a minus one becomes a plus one, a plus one will become a minus one. You just flip the terms of one. You have now proven um, this pattern here, that if I have five squared minus one, if I have phi n squared minus one equals uh, phi n minus one times phi n plus one, that uh, phi n plus one squared plus one will be equal to phi n times phi n minus two. But if this becomes my new phi n, and I make this a plus a squared plus 1 is equal to phi n minus 1 times phi n plus 1, then my next term it'll be a minus 1. And so that proves the recursion all the way to infinity. And you now have knowledge of a hidden code of the universe arrived at through reason, through logic, and um, makes you feel good, doesn't it?